25 yard touchdown pass the subsequent extra point and the Nebraska Cornhuskers after falling behind at the outset of the game after a fumble come right back and take the lead seven to three. 6.43 left to play in the first quarter here at the 1982 Orange Bowl and the Huskers will kick it off when we come back. One more look at the touchdown pass from Rogier to Steele. Perfectly set up, perfectly executed. Right over the top of Terry Kennard. 7-3. Beat the All-American, 7-3 it is. Nebraska takes the lead with 6.43 left to play. Don Cricky with John Brody, Bob Trumpy at the 1982 Orange Bowl. Clemson now ready to get the ball back. Nebraska ready to hit it. Kevin Seibel will kick off. He kicks a very high ball, in fact, against Oklahoma. Two of his kickoffs were fair caught by the Sooners. They were that high. The coverage was down. Here's another nine iron shot that carries a yard deep and was so high that Clemson elects not to bring it out. <laughs> Gary Tuttle taken in the end zone. You're telling me that his own man fair caught the ball? No, no. The two Oklahoma players oh. took the kickoffs and fair caught the kickoff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's high. That is high. Another one was fumbled. While we have a moment, let's swing back over to Bob Trumpy with the Nebraska coaches. All right, we got a flag on that kickoff. It's going to draw back, but as I said earlier, the Nebraska coaches still staying with their game plan. No sweat whatsoever. We got four of them in here. Two on offense, two on defense. And on offense, they're in contact with Tom Osborne, trying to keep Tom Osborne appraised of one, down and distance information, and two, what the defense. The defensive coaches are primarily talking to the players on the sideline and they have a separate set of communication devices down there on the field so that <coughs> so that they can talk to uh, anybody on the defense or the offense in particular they want to primarily the offensive coaches to Tom Osborne defensive coaches to particular players and you know Don it's so funny that uh, that some coaches prefer to have a headset on keep in close communications we remember James out in the Rose Bowl said I really don't like to I, li I like to coach the coaches uh, and Dan Ford, on the other hand, really doesn't like to have much to do with the offense on game day. He won't be in contact with them, but he will be after that defensive group. Just depends which, uh, whether you like apples or oranges. Well, it's worked well both for James and for Danny Ford this year. There's big Dave Remington, the junior from Omaha South High School. And now another kickoff after an offside against Nebraska. Seibel hits it deep again. This time Tuttle takes it the one yard line. He turns to the outside, he's to the 20, to the 30, and the race is on as Perry Tuttle takes it out to the 40-yard line. Rodley Newis finally ran him down. Don, you can always tell a great running back, even though he's going to be a receiver later on in his career. But at Clemson, he's not one of those fellas that runs blindly into a hole. As he gets the ball, he takes off up the middle. This is where the play is intended to go. He's looking for any crack. He's got great peripheral vision. When he finds it, he takes to the outside. He finds a little lack in the containment to the right side. Picks it up, gets it out to the 39-yard line. They've got good field position. 39-yard return, longest of the year for Tuttle on a kickoff run back. And now it's first and 10 for Clemson. High back, Austin. Cliff Austin takes it ahead and gets across the 40. Got about three. Henry Waxter knocked him down. Dr. Tom Osborne, coach of Nebraska, took over after Nebraska's last national championship, which they won here in the Orange Bowl when they routed Alabama back in 1972, New Year's Day night. And then he retired then after back-to-back -back national titles. Osborne took over in every year as Nebraska teams have finished in the top ten nationally. Every year they've been to a bowl game. He said this is his best club. Now, Homer Jordan, pump fakes, goes in the flat. Jerry Gilliard loses the ball. Gilliard hasn't caught a lot of balls this year, Don, but I can, I can think of a few other Clemson receivers who haven't in the past. If you look at Dwight Clark, he was the other side to Jerry Butler, and he's going to the Pro Bowl this year. But I tell you, Gilliard is thought to be one of the best athletes they've had in this school for quite some time. And they're right now, they're covering Tuttle very well. He's going to have to come off to his ultimate receivers. Tuttle is way out the top of your screen. That's Gilliard in the slot. Frank Magwood is in as another wide receiver set to the left. Homer Jordan, quick count, goes in the flat. Gilliard goes up and gets the ball. It will be short of the first down. Jeff Krejci. 
Wrong safety for Nebraska was there to cover, and so the Clemson Tigers come up short in the third down play, and they'll have to punt. They got some punter, Dale Hatcher, a freshman. Clemson played Tulane in the Superdome, warming up before the game. He hit the speakers overhead three times. <laughs> and unload. Very high punt. That got the speakers. They hit the lights. <laughs> Irving Fryer with a fair catch for Nebraska. So the Huskers set to go back on offense after their long sustained drive the last time. 44 yard punt. Now with 542 left to go in the first quarter, the score stands. Nebraska 7, Clemson 3. A load of orange dressed Clemson fans is swept down from South Carolina, including that little doll. They're buying tickets if they could from Nebraska people. Premium rates for tickets to this Orange Bowl. Nebraska in the lead, 7 to 3. First down and 10 for the Corn Huskers, first quarter. Roger Craig runs to the ball and doesn't get much as the Clemson defense, led by number 45, Jeff Davis, their All American linebacker, makes the knockdown. There is a penalty marker down. Now let's check out the coaches again, Bob. All right, the coaches here in Nebraska booth, a little upset with the Nebraska players, are not getting good performance out of a couple of players and said, the one guy, I won't mention his name, but they said that if uh, he doesn't play better, they're going to get him on the sideline. The offense is doing, doing very, very well, although they're still trying to run against that gap defense of, of Clemson. They're talking presently now that they're going to throw it outside, try to get outside somewhat to loosen up that gap defense. Not we're trying hey. to listen. Have you ever tried to? Think it's at 50. Hey, that guy's getting smoked. Yeah. He didn't. Roddy was close to a little. He didn't. Well, I tell you, it's pretty tough to make much sense out of a group of coaches in the booth. But I will tell you, if they don't like the execution of their Nebraska uh, team, I'll coach them. I like the way they're playing. And if they have one or two people that aren't playing up to snuff, that means they've got nine doing a fine job. Well, as you know, John, Nebraska's like a freight train. They start to roll slowly, and then they are unbelievable. I've never seen an offensive line like Nebraska's against Oklahoma in the final regular season game. Penalty against the Cornhuskers sets them back inside their 10, first and 16. Too much crowd noise. Well, you know, in, in, in many situations, I think Clemson would have declined that penalty, but when they're as close to the goal line as Nebraska is right now, they're putting them in a position where it's very difficult for them to throw the ball. And a quarterback in a big game like this would be concerned with an interception. And I think it puts them in a much more aggressive position defensively. Normally, when you've got a second and 10, it's just it's much better than first and 15. In this case, I agree with it. And they're playing to create some breaks. And when you have second and 15 on your own seven yard line, uh, you're in a good position to create one. Well, let's see what they go with now. Mar, a very under control quarterback. Good thrower. He's going to put it up from his end zone. On the run, he swings it out. The ball is taken. Doug Wilkening, a pullback, comes out of the backfield. He's knocked down by Jeff Davis. But the Tigers get back some of the lost yardage now. It's going to be second down and 10, a six-yard gain on the play. Uh, Jeff Davis is an hombre. He's one of the strongest players in all of college football. Bench presses over 515 pounds. I'll tell you, he can move a little bit. When you start making tackles from sideline to sideline, that's... That's a coach's dream. There aren't many around. 220 pound backer that can bench press 515. He might be the only one of those. <laughs> there aren't many if there's another one. Penalty markers down as the Huskers go to the run on second down and 10. And they get the ball out across the 15 yard line. That's it. Corn Husker. <laughs> Couldn't he create the same effect with a little lighter object? They're all out there. Oscar's having a little trouble getting hit in all eight here. Marker's going against them on offense with 4.14 to play in the first quarter. But Nebraska leads the game 7-3. Clemson struck first on a 41-yard field goal. Then Nebraska came right down the field on a halfback option pass. A 41-yarder. Mike Rozier hit his wing back. Anthony Steele's in the end zone, and Nebraska took the lead. That's how it stands now, 7-3. Big play here to get out of the hole. Third down and six. Third down and six coming up. 
Tim Childers, the 